All right, so what are you doing tomorrow with Carlton White? We are transporting Carlton to Logansport. A regular part of the job for staff at Lake County Juvenile oh. Complex is transferring kids to the Department of Correction. I mean, this is the real thing. It's uh -huh. yes or no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Otherwise, you're going to feel the wrath. I mean, they're very strict. They're very fair, but this is the way you do it. Are you going to cuff and shackle him down here? Are you going to do it at intake? OK. Carlton White was committed to the Department of Corrections um, about a week ago, and he's going for his charge of possession of marijuana, disorderly conduct, fleeing law enforcement, and one, two, three, four violations of probation. When looking at his probation officer report, you see that he was given chance after chance to get his act together. In my home, it, it's nice, you know, I ain't had no problem, but the outside community that I was in, was ridiculous. Rival gangs, drugs, all that bad stuff. Like a couple days back, before I came in here, I got jumped by 12 guys. They just hopped out of the car, I was like, oh, what's up, man? What you want to do today, man? You want to smoke some weed? You want to drink some beer? Let's have some fun. And they look at you like, what you going to be? And if you don't want to be that gay, it's, you know, it's a problem. After his third trip to LCJC, Carlton's judge gave him the harshest penalty at his disposal, a transfer to the Department of Corrections. I was like, what, boys school? Why I gotta go to boys school for? All the way down there in Logansport, Indiana? So I'm like, man, that's gonna be kinda hard because I ain't never been to boys school. I'm used to this, but I ain't used to boys school. Boys school and girls school is basically prison for children. It's run by the Department of Correction, as is the adult prisons, and the only people housed there are kids under the age of 18. Going to Indiana boys' school or girls' school is the worst thing we can do to them, because you lose your freedom, you're in a prison. Got a couple friends in Logansport. They wrote me some letters and said it ain't a walk through the park. Their favorite word was, only the strong survive. <laughs> Because Carlton has repeated probation violations, the juvenile court judge assigned to his case opted to transfer him to boys' school, a juvenile prison operated by the Department of Correction. His transfer is scheduled for tomorrow. Carlton? How are you? Can I introduce myself? I'm Mr. Brock. Why are you transferring you tomorrow to boys' school? Uh, in a boys' school, will I be able to get my GED? Yes, you will. My suggestion would be try to get your high school diploma. GED is good. You're young. High school diploma is much better. Okay? You want to go to college? Yeah. Absolutely. And you can do it. Oh, yeah? You can do it. It's exactly. It's all up to you. It's not up to me. It's not up to the judge. It's not up to the probation officer. They've all tried to help you. Now, this is a last resort. Now it's up to you, right? Okay. Um, Brett Burkholder is in his third year at LCJC, where he first started as an arts and crafts teacher. Okay. Who wants to do the word fine? One guy, that's it? All right, come on up and get your pencil. Brett's path to LCJC is anything but typical. He was a star basketball player at DePaul University in Chicago. And when he got out of college, he started a career at the Chicago Stock Exchange. When I was playing in college, four of my teammates went to the NBA, four of us graduated, went on to be successful, and four went to prison. 
So I've always had this uh, idea of giving back. And uh, I saw the opportunity here to come work with the kids. It's just, it's just a perfect fit. And I really like it. Which one are you on? Pistol. Pistol? Do you know who Pistol Pete was? Yeah, I know we played that ball. You got it. Good job. What grade in school are you? 11. Are you all caught up on your credits? Yes. I hope I get out so I can go back to school you know, and get the rest of them. Can you get back and stay out of trouble? That's the key. Yeah, I wasn't in trouble when I was there. And what? Well, you're here. And I'm not in trouble. You're not in trouble? Okay. But what you perceive as doing nothing is probably breaking the law. Right? Yeah. Or hurting somebody else. Really? I had this vision of what I could do here, and people are telling me you're crazy, but uh, I find a lot of good in the kids, especially when they open up to you. And along the way, I am helping kids. I, I really feel like I am. Single file, quietly. <laughs> It's before dawn on Wednesday morning. The detention officers wake Carlton and prepare him for his transfer to boys' school. Ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Get your I hear you. Most kids going to boys' school are not happy. Most of them are pretty angry, and they feel like that their future is uncertain. They don't really know what's going to come of it. It's going to be a big day because I ain't never been. But whatever it takes me through, I'm gonna just go through it. I don't think I'm a bad kid, because I got the power to do anything I want. I mean, I'm intelligent, smart, you know. But then again, everybody mess up. We, we ain't perfect. We're ready. All set. Ready. Leaving with one for IBS. Central copy. I've been in LCJC three times. The first time I was 13, that was overnight, so I really didn't count it, and that's for runaway. All right, I'm ready now. Paradise is no stranger to the halls of LCJC. She's been here before. But this time, she'll be leaving for placement outside the home in a residential facility. You've never been to a placement? Ever? How old are you? 15. Oh, you're young. What's going on at home that you can't go home? Um, um, well, my dad and all that. Your dad, dad what? Whatever. What about your mom? Is she around? Yeah, she's living with my uncle. Do you have contact with her? Every so often. Like so many of the kids who pass through LCJC, Paradise's problems begin with an unstable home life. I don't like my dad. Like, we never really got along. I really didn't have a father figure when I was growing up. A lot of the girls that are in here, they're here for running away. And they're always running away from something. It's never just like, happy child running away from a happy home. There's always some sort of story behind there. And they do tell you their stories that are always very sad. Most of these kids have upbringings and family lives and home environments that few of us can imagine. Paradise isn't unusual in that sometimes these stressors become unbearable. I was living with my mom and she was working at the gas station, so it would be me and my three younger siblings at home when my mom works till 11 o'clock. I just never really got used to it, and I just left. Like, running away from my problems, basically. The majority of the cases here are sad cases, and we need something to help these young girls out because they're not getting it. Somewhere along the line, we just forgot, and we go straight from them, you know, being in an unhappy home to them being in jail. Like, there's no in-between for them. I have two older sisters, one older brother, 
Two younger sisters and one younger brother. Other times in LCJC, well, me and my sister, we, we stole from a store like last year. And then when I ran away, the second time I robbed a house too. So they kept me here for a month. And then I went home on my ankle bracelet. While on house arrest, the probation department monitored Paradise's progress. But it wasn't long before family problems escalated once again. It just got too wild, so I cut out my ankle bracelet and I left. And then two weeks later, I got caught and came back in here. And my last court date, I knew I was going to placement because I have a record of runaways. And I knew they weren't going to send me home. Placement would be like a foster care situation. It's like group homes, uh, residential treatment. Sometimes kids have to be removed from the family setting because they just cannot function in the home. And so we separate them out so that we can you really concentrate on what the issues are. Did they tell you how long they think you're going to be there? Three months, if I'm good, but if I'm bad, I could be there until six months to a year. How, when are you going to be 16? March 30th. Oh, right around the corner. Can't wait. <laughs> the public does not see it, but you have like this picket, you know, white fence in your head, and what these kids are going through in their home life is not always positive. So to expect for them to listen to me when I tell them, look, you gotta stay in school, make sure you listen to your mom, you know, all that is words. I think a lot of times the kids want to do good, but depending on how their home life is set up, it's very difficult for even the strongest child to rise above and, and go to a positive path. So are you okay with going to placement better than being here? Mm-hmm. I'd rather be there than here. I'm actually lucky I'm in here because, I mean, I'm not lucky because this ain't the place you want to be, but I'm thankful because when I was out there, I was drinking and I was smoking and having sex. When I'm in here, I'm not drinking, smoking, or having sex, so it kind of puts a lot of stress off of you instead of putting stress on you. Some of the times, you know, it's best to go in a place like this or get help. It's better to get help than stay in some place that you're not wanted. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Yep, you too. As a repeat juvenile offender, Carlton is familiar with Lake County Juvenile Complex. Logansport, Indiana, boys' school, that's something new altogether. So if I'm there for the two weeks, where would be the next place they shift me off to? It's all going to depend on how you do these two weeks here. Say if I do fantastic. There's a real good chance that they will do, like we were discussing in the hallway, maybe send you to some place where you can learn a trade, work on your GED, an option like that. Education and vocational training are paramount to the Indiana correctional system. Carlton has high hopes that his time at boys' school will be implemental in helping him be a better member of his community. We get them here, they change a little bit, and then we ship them right back to the same environment they came from. So what's going to happen? Their peers have a lot more influence on them than we do, is what I see. Carlton, were you ever in a game? Been pressured to be in a game? <laughs> yeah, most of the time. What do they entice you with to get in the game? They come to you when you're young, obviously. Do they offer you things? Do they promise you things? Like you said, like, come on, be with the family, you know. We got your back, we ain't gonna let nothing happen to you, you know. So it's protection? Well, actually, I can handle my own problems. Like, I don't need nobody to help me with my problems, but I, I mean, what I do, I pray, you know what I'm saying? Basically, prayer changes things. That's what I do. It's not always answered right away, though. I asked right away, but you know, it, it comes to you. Have you ever lost a close friend? Yeah, I lost a couple close friends. See, when I was little, I used to be, I ain't gonna say outrageous or whatever like that, but I was like, I wanted to always try to fit in a little bit. About five years earlier, Carlton attempted to rob a home with a friend of his. 
and came dangerously close to the worst possible outcome. I was telling him, man, I don't even think we should do this, man. He's like, man, you got this far, and you gonna punk out on me, man? I'm like, man, I just don't feel right. So I left. Um, I guess about 45 minutes later, police is all around the house because they, they've been watching. He tried to run, flee or whatever. The police shot him in the back of the head. That, I'm thinking like, man, that could have been me, man. Was he armed? Yeah, he was armed. We was both armed. How old were you? I was about 12, 13. 12 or 13 and you were armed? Yeah. Wow. These kids grow up so fast. It's unbelievable. And I try to put myself in their place, but really I can't. I've never been through what they've been through. So that's hard. And I even tell them that. I don't know what I would do if I was in your situation. I don't know. So Carlton, you were 12. I have a 12 year old. I couldn't even phantom him even having the thought of carrying a gun, robbing somebody, going into somebody's house. How did it get to that point where you were you wanted to do that? I was out in the streets, like I wanted to make a name for myself, okay? It was a bunch of us, like, it was a crime watch neighborhood, you know, drug trafficking, right. pistol carrying. It was just crazy. Like, it came to the point that I was almost dead. I'm pretty convinced it's my last stop in the system because I see what it's like, and this, this ain't what nobody want, really, you know. You want freedom, that's what you want. Before we arrive? No, ma'am. Are you relaxed now? I'm a, bit a little anxious, nervous. Oh, I got the sweaty hands again. Carlton's trip to boys' school is near over. As they drive through Logansport, the reality of everything he's about to face begins to sink in. Oh, I'm a little nervous because this will be my first time going to DLC, but I feel I'm a big person, so I can get it over with. Get Carlton out. The security officer there is going to take him, put him against the wall, frisk him, and then we'll give him the paperwork. We uncuff him, unshackle him, and then we sign and we leave. We say goodbye and good luck, Carlton. See you at the mall. <laughs> yeah, Lake County with one. Okay. That's a lot of people out here. They deep. Up there on the wall. Go. Up there on the wall. Put your hands up on the wall. You ever been here before? No, sir. Hands behind your back. Pull your pants back. Hold them up. Pull your pants up. Pants. Hold them up. Come over here and put your toes on the tape in front of the desk. Carlton will spend two weeks at Logansport. While he's there, he'll get complete psychosocial evaluations so that the Department of Correction can determine the best prison for his rehabilitation. At the end of the two weeks, the counselor does a report on his whole history, and they will make recommendations about what criminogenic needs they're going to recommend that be addressed at the next facility, and he'll actually be participating in his treatment. He'll be expected to talk about basically what led him here and how he's planning on changing his behavior and whether the treatment that he could benefit from. Thank you, really. I'll hand it to that officer. I need for you to stand right here on the tape, please. One article at a time. Take off all your clothes. Put them in this bag. Mm -hmm. Okay, turn around. Spread them. Spread your cheeks. Use your hands. There you go. Turn back around. What it's really like is hell, cause you you want to be at home. You want to do the things you want to do. You don't want nobody to tell you 
what you got to do. Like you a little kid. You want to do things on your own. Me being a new face, you know, everybody want to know what I'm about, what I'm here for, what you going to do while you down here, can you fight, all that bull crap. Hopefully everything go OK, smooth, and just hopefully just get it over with. I'm going to miss my mom, but then again, I got to do what I got to do. And I'll be back with her, and I don't know. I'm gonna just pray that I do good. Cause if I get in this process again, it won't be DLC nor Juvenile, it'll be Lake County for the big people, the big house. And you don't want to go there. Any uh, final thoughts now that you're here? I'm cool. Cool. Is it what you thought it was gonna be? Yeah, yeah. Thank you.